Hi, boys. So, yeah. Um, a very professional way of filming my laptop. So, I uh, changed out my sound card. Um, I have, or had, or still have, actually. I had the Digidesign Mbox 2, which is this uh, thing. Uh, so it is a pre-amplifier, uh, USB pre-amplifier you can use for uh, editing audio and such. Uh, it's meant for Pro Tools. Um, but you can also use it to measure your speakers on uh, Room EQ Wizard. Um, I used it for a year, a uh, year and a half, I don't know. Uh, it has a mic input, a line input, not needed. L two lines out, not balanced, unfortunate. Uh, and it had a padding for the microphone, which could be helpful. And uh, a phantom power, which I need for my mic. But there was one problem, and it, uh, it's the following. It, it reaches only, or the sample rate is only maximum 48 kilohertz. And with a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz, you can only measure, in theory, up to 24 kilohertz analog sound. Um, so I can show you maybe a measurement uh, here. So this is a measurement of, oops, there we go, from a 48 kilohertz source. And that should not be a big deal. I mean, we don't hear above 20k. So for instance, the CD player only has 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate and it reaches to around 20k and the reason for that is actually because they need filtering because uh, if you if you would want to record like a 22k which is in theory should be I think yeah no 21k for instance or something 22 should be possible with this sampling rate but uh, it could it, it could make some artifacts, especially above the 22k. But to filter out these components, so you won't get any artifacts, you, well, you apply a filter, but as we know, it's not insanely steep. It doesn't change or goes on or off at a, a certain frequency. It has a slope. So that's the reason why they kind of set it at 20k and then there is a slope. So there might be some information still, but well, very um, weird story and uh, not very clear, but a CD is up to 20k. That's all you have to know. <laughs> With the 48 kilohertz Mbox 2, I can measure up to 24k, as you can see here. Actually, it is uh, also lower, probably because of the same reasons, but it reaches to 23k, although I measured up to 24. And uh, that's okay for just the frequency response. I mean, I don't hear 20k, so 24k is, well, more than enough for me. But it becomes a thing when you want to measure distortion, uh, harmonic distortion, that is. As you can see here, the red line is uh, second order and the brownish line that's almost not visible because it's below the noise floor um, it stops even earlier but so this is the second order harmonic distortion and this is the third and if we look a little bit closer wah. we can see it stops measuring at around 11 and a half K. Harmonics work like this. It has a fundamental frequency, for instance, 11 and a half K. And the second order harmonic would be at 23 K. So double the frequency of the fundamental. So in order to measure the harmonic distortion of the second order harmonic, it should capture at least 23k. So that's why it stops at 11.5. For the third harmonic, it is even less. It's one third. 
and the way it's in these kind of um, measurements although you look here at, at 10k for instance or let's say 11 and a half K it is actually the distortion at 23 K but to make it more clear where it belongs or at least um, by what fundamental it is um, excited uh, they shifted the whole thing so they shifted all these harmonic distortions to the left so it will line up with the fundamental it, uh, that excited or created that distortion. So that's the reason why all these distortions uh, stop. So second order is the one that is um, going the furthest. Then the third and then the fourth and then etc etc etc. So if you want to know information about distortion for instance a peak here in the measurement I got a weird peak here at 8k in the second order harmonic so we know it's something at 16k or at least the harmonic is at 16k but it is uh, produced by the 8k fundamental now we can still see this in the second order but I would be interested to see what what the third harmonic did as well but the problem here is is that it well the, the third harmonic stopped at seven and a half k or something so just before this peak so i have no clue what's happening there um, and if you want to measure up to 20k i would be interested to see the distortion as well up to 20k maybe it's not that trivial or something but um, it might explain some of the things you see in the frequency response for instance so you need a higher sample rate so I did a measurement here with 96 kilohertz sample rate but I left the measuring uh, measuring frequency up to 24k in analog sound and if you compare it with the 48 kilohertz sampling rate you can see it's almost the same so if you are interested in seeing these uh, harmonics up higher you really have to measure it up to 48 kilohertz that's this one you can see that the second order extended beyond 22k so that's covering the complete hearing range and the third harmonic that I'm able to see right now uh, and is under the noise floor so it's grayed out but it reaches to well one third of the maximum frequency so it's 14.9 ish 15 so uh, at least the 8k peak would show up if it was the same speaker which is not the case so that's the reason why uh, 96 kilohertz is quite nice to have when you're measuring so this one couldn't do it so i had to buy a new one so i bought this focus right scarlet solo gen 2 and can measure uh, up to 192 kilohertz if you want not sure if that's needed for anything um, I don't even think my laptop will um, handle that because it's quite slow it has problems with this already so might need to upgrade that again as well um, but this is the focus Ryan uh, it has phantom power um, one mic input and um, quite chintzy annoying connectors for the output I don't like these cinch or kinch or in Dutch they call it tulip connectors as well because it looks kind of like a tulip I guess I'm not sure but uh, it feels a bit cheapy but it does work so well not too shabby so yeah that's why um, a higher sample rate could be very useful to have more uh, well to see more what's happening in the 
in the distortion uh, department. So I was quite limited with the 48 kilohertz. So um, the focus right does measure quite straight, or it's like ruler straight to be honest. Uh, it has slightly more noise than my digi design, but uh, it might be just some gain settings that I did not, I might not have found the perfect spot to be uh, sitting with the gain yet. But uh, overall, it looks uh, it looks promising. Um, but I do hope I get this noise a little bit down because otherwise, as you can see here, um, some of the third harmonics will disappear into the noise, which is a <laughs> which is good. I mean, it means that it's really low. Uh, but still, so that's the reason why. Um, 96 is nice to have of course the higher the better but question remains if your mic is even working at, at these high frequencies mine is not rated for like 84,000 Hertz so I'm not sure how much you can trust um, at that frequency I think nothing actually so it's more to just extend a little bit this uh, distortion measurements up till where the mic uh, itself becomes a problem and unfortunately there is no I never seen a measurement I think up till 30k or something of this particular mic so that's that's too bad but I have to roll with what we got so so yeah see you around hopefully I can make some new measurements of the crap I make and hopefully improve them. Who knows?